I Ninja. The first thing anybody thinks of when they hear the title of this game is Apple products like the iPhone and the iPad. Well, you know, I didn't even know about this game when it came out. It was only in the last few years that I discovered it. And it's a shame that it got so overlooked when the GameCube was in its heyday, because I think it's a very strong title for the system that few people remember. It was also on the PlayStation 2 and the Xbox, I just happened to have the GameCube version. So you're a ninja and your master is killed. Right in the intro to the game, he's decapitated and he becomes your guide throughout the game, in the same vein as Obi-Wan Kenobi or Jaga, with the blue aura around him. Overall, the story is as cliche and basic as they come, but it's saved by small touches of humor. We hope you enjoy causing many days of pain and suffering to your enemies. The main character is, of course, I Ninja, a round-headed, overly cute ninja that fights swarms of evil synthetic robot enemies. He's voiced by Billy West, most famous for his work on Ren and Stimpy and Futurama, amongst other things. No, now I leave. Goodbye, fish girl. His character's lines, along with the sensei, give the game a much-needed sense of humor, which helps elevate the experience. You want some more? Here, have some more! One example of the humor is how the sensei comes up with all these absurd metaphors that make no sense. A friend in need is good for the gander. It's got a vibrant, cartoony feel, which I'm guessing was inspired by The Wind Waker, which is okay in my book because I like that style. For the record, I like both Legend of Zelda styles, the realistic Twilight Princess look and the cel-shaded look. I think that there's room for both graphic styles. Anyway, I Ninja definitely leans towards the kid-friendly Zelda look. It was developed by Argonaut Games. Is that like Jason and the Argonauts? They also made a bunch of Super Nintendo games like the Ren and Stimpy show Fire Dogs. I wonder if that had anything to do with them getting Billy West to do the voice for this. I Ninja is mainly a third person action platformer, with some other gameplay style variations, most noticeably running around on ramps like in Super Monkey Ball. On each stage you have to unlock a bunch of doors. Some of the doors have colored barriers in front of them. You'll need to get a certain type of belt to open certain doors. For example, you need the yellow belt to take down the yellow barrier. And in order to get the belt, you have to go through different stages. As you go through these stages in the game, there's a wide variety of objectives to overcome. Different objectives include things like collecting spheres and bringing them back to the start, defeating all the enemies required to complete the area, racing to the end of stage and grabbing the belt upgrade before the bomb goes off, riding explosive barrels around obstacles in a cage, defending a bay from battle cruisers, traveling up a river on logs to make it to a cave, killing sap suckers that are destroying trees, searching caverns for darts, then using the darts to release a giant crystal, all kinds of stuff. Having all these different objectives keeps the game from getting stale. Also what helps stand this game apart from the crowd is the huge range of moves that the ninja can do. He can jump and then double jump in the air, he can slash with his sword, and then also use the sword to hover like a helicopter. When you get to a wall, you can jump onto it and run up. You can wall jump, reminiscent of Ninja Gaiden and Batman. There's many sections with rails where the ninja can grind along it like a Tony Hawk game. He can use his grappling hook to swing over pits or guide you around a half pipe track while running at high speeds. And that's just when you're walking around like normal. Then when you obtain the giant sphere, the game goes into monkey ball mode where the ninja clings onto a ball as you maneuver yourself around obstacles and enemies. But I can't help but thinking, it has to hurt like hell being crushed by that ball while you travel around. Other aspects of the game remind me of Ratchet and Clank for the PlayStation, the way you jump up walls and ride on rails. So yeah, the game plays like if you threw Ratchet and Clank and Super Monkey Ball into a blender. And some parts even remind me of Sonic the Hedgehog. It may be largely a copy of other games, but at least I Ninja is imitating good games. There's some moves that are limited to battles. For example, the B button will allow him to stab, while the X button does a spin attack. If you just slash your sword continually, it won't do much because the enemies are smart enough to block. So you're gonna have to learn to move and sideswipe them. If another enemy attacks, you can jump into the air and down thrust onto them, which is cool. When you kill an enemy, the death animation looks really awesome. They split in half, revealing their gooey, slime-like insides. Most of the time, you'll be using your basic sword, but you can also get projectiles, like darts. And occasionally, they'll even be cannons to eliminate enemies. But the best thing is your special attacks. It takes a while before you get these abilities, but once you do, they're awesome. So there's all kinds of variety with the control. But speaking of variety in the game, the boss fights offer completely different styles of fighting, like a boxing match that I don't particularly care for. You have to punch and dodge, that's fine, but it just takes forever. There's a meter on the side of the screen that fills up as you punch your opponent, but whenever it does get full, I end up getting hit and losing it, making it worthless. 
Hey, it's nice that they put some extra effort to try and make the boss fight something unique, but I don't think this one works out that well. I wish they would have just stuck to the standard fighting as seen in the rest of the game. There's another boss where you have to fight a giant fish by shooting it in the submarine. I really hate this boss fight because you have to keep hitting the button over and over to fire and it takes forever to kill the guy. It'll just make your thumb sore. There's no reason they couldn't have just let you hold the button down, especially when before this I played a board where you have to shoot ships and there you could just hold the button down. The graphics in this game are well done. The ninja himself moves so fluidly it actually seems like he's alive. It can be fun just to watch this game as it looks like a cartoon. Yes, it has a cute style to it, but with all the robots, lasers, and animated violence, as you're playing, you don't get the sense that the game was solely developed for kids. The game certainly does get difficult, but the checkpoints are often enough that if you die, you're never put that far back that you feel like quitting. Like in Ninja Gaiden, when it sent you back after dying on the last boss. That was the worst. There's a few things about the game that bother me though. One thing I'm on the fence about is redoing levels. At a certain point, they make you re-enter levels that you've already completed to defeat the area in another way, either as a time trial or by collecting red coins. Part of me kind of enjoys trying to beat the time trials, but another part of me feels like the designers are trying to just make you feel like the game is bigger than it really is, by having you repeat the same areas over and over again. And while there are many cool moves at your disposal, one thing I don't really like is that you can't always spin the camera 360 degrees. The camera will kind of like lock if you go too far. Why couldn't they make it like Wind Waker where you could just spin the camera around completely? I find that really aggravating as I play. Most of the time the camera does swoop around to the right place that it should be, but every so often it'll be slightly off which can just become maddening. And a little thing that gets on my nerves, after you kill an enemy, often the ninja will say one of his funny one-liners, but he's got so few of them that you end up hearing the same thing over and over. Feel my steel! Feel my steel! Feel my steel! That is quite a catchphrase. The game does tend to get really difficult as you get to the later stages, but you know, it's a really hard game to turn off. You actually want to see what's coming up next, and I think that's mainly because they keep it fresh by giving you different objectives all the time. The other thing that makes you want to keep going is leveling up. When you get to the end of stage, it counts up your score, which is then converted to skill points. When you get enough of these skill points, your sword is upgraded, giving you a sense of accomplishment, which makes the game really addicting. Games like that always make me want to revisit them in the future, so it's got a lot of replay value. The sapphire sword was carved out of the largest sapphire crystal ever known and found on the floor of the deepest ocean. It is light and razor sharp. Yeah, you see, upgrading is great because now you know all those annoying enemies from before, now they're gonna be easy as hell. You want some more? Have some more! Feel my steel! Overall, its charm comes from simply having fun, varied gameplay. It's not the best platformer of all time or anything, but it's certainly above average. If you missed out on this game when it was released, I'd say it's worth going back and giving it a shot. Ninja! Wait!